Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you're passing through, I hope you like what you hear and I welcome your comments. And yeah, if you like what you hear, you just have to click on the thumbs up. And if it's the first time you're passing through, you might want to subscribe and you might even want to share this video. It's up to you. And welcome to um, my existing subscribers. Yes, so what am I going to talk about today? Um, I'm going to talk about Robert Mugabe today because we all know he died just a couple of weeks ago and he was branded as a tyrant and I do not like to speak ill of the dead so I do not intend to. What I found interesting though was that somebody sent me a video, yes it was a video, um, telling me, well not telling me, but it was talking about Robert Mugabe's knighthood. And I thought to myself, you don't really hear much about that, that he was actually knighted. All we hear is that he's some tyrant, you know, he's killed millions of people, you know, the uh, local people fear him, and yet on the other hand, he was considered a role model and he was distinguished enough to receive a knighthood. He was knighted by the Queen in 1994. He wouldn't be called Sir Robert Knight. He wouldn't be called Sir Robert Mugabe because his knighthood was honorary. And people who are not born in Britain will only get an honorary knighthood, but it carries the same weight. It carries the same esteem. They can put KBE after their name if they want. And yes, it was um, quite a, an achievement. So why did he get a knighthood in 1994? Well, rumour has it, we can't really know because, you know, we get so many different stories, but rumour has it that at one point he was on the side of the Brits and he was one of these men who, let's say, sold out their own kind then up until a point. So in order to get prestige and stuff like that, he did some, he did some not so pleasant things. And for doing not so pleasant things, he was held in high esteem by the Brits. And as a result, he got the knighthood in 1994. Now, you know, you can do, you know, every, each one of us, we do things that we later regret. And sometimes we turn around and think, oh, I shouldn't have really done that. What can I do to put things right? So at some point, he decided to put right his wrongs and he decided to go against the Brits from what I understand and he decided that one of the things he needed to do for his country was to turf all the white people who were occupying Zimbabwe land out and that's what he did and there was a some of them were killed there was a lot of stuff going on all the farmers were being booted out and as a result, he was not looked too highly off by the Queen and the Brits or the British government because he had done like a 360 degree turn. On the one hand, he was considered in, in quotes a lackey. And on the other, and, and within maybe about 10 years, he had turned into what they call a rebel, a tyrant, all of the bad words under the sun. Um, so that is, and so as a result of him turning on them like that, they um, stripped him of his knighthood in 2008. Um, and since then, he's had nothing, you know, he's been caught, he's been, um, he's on the terror, he's on the terror list for the United States. He can't go to the United States and all sorts. Um, so he's really been branded, really. I mean, he's he's dead now, but he was branded as though he was the worst person on earth. So um, I'm going to put the video in the link, which is the source of this um, video. 
and I did a little bit um, just to find out what was what, um, what you know, why people get a knighthood, which is I'm going I'm going to read them out in a minute because I'm trying to think, okay, what do you do? How do you qualify for a knighthood? I mean, he had to be nominated. I think some people are nominated and they go on this power list. And then they're nominated by the foreign secretary and the home, the the home, the home secretary. But the funny thing is, is that Douglas Hurd was the foreign secretary at the time, 1994. And would you believe he didn't even know that Robert Mugabe had been knighted? And they're the ones that are supposed to put them up. If the Queen doesn't do it herself, they're the ones who are meant to nominate him for knighthood. And he claims he didn't even know he must have been suffering from amnesia. The only reason I'm saying that is because sometimes we hear so many things. And, you know, for Robert Mugabe, who they've been bashing so badly to get a knighthood, at one point in time, the British must have held him in high esteem. And why did they hold him in high esteem? And then the next minute, denigrate him so badly. You have to ask yourself these questions. Well, I was asking myself these questions. So that's why I wanted to know what you have to do to get a knighthood. Um, who can nominate you for a knighthood? And I'm going to read. It's not very long because I'm not going to belabor the point. This is just really for those of you who didn't know that technically Robert Mugabe is Sir Robert Mugabe. Anyway. Let me um, see. Um, I'm just going to start off. He wasn't always rebellious. At one point, he took advantage of being the token black boy, doing the dirty work, securing and protecting white interests and challenging anyone who threatened his rule. While he protected white interest, he was a hero. So he was nominated to be a knight and the queen knighted him in 1994. Um, in or around 2000, Robert Mugabe decided on a new legislation that stated that Britain was obliged to pay for the land seized from the African people during the colonial period. If Britain did not pay, stated the law, then the Zimbabwe government was authorised to seize the land without paying compensation. So you know that didn't go down very well. So the British government had earmarked 37 million for much needed land reform in Zimbabwe, but Mr. Mugabe's land grab did not qualify for the fund. So they decided we're not going to give you 37 million if you're going to turf our people out of Zimbabwe. In 2008, he was stripped of his knighthood because of his, in quotes, abuse of human rights and abject disregard for democracy. Um, close quotes. It was known that he allegedly arranged the killings of thousands of people in Matabele land with, with North Korean trained armies in 1980, but he was still awarded the knighthood in 1994. Does that make any sense? Not really. Um, Douglas Hurd was Foreign Secretary in 1994, but he didn't know Mugabe had received a knighthood. Douglas Hurd claims that he got the knighthood for hosting a Commonwealth conference that the Queen attended. Can you imagine getting a knighthood for just putting on a conference? I don't think so. And that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of hidden. You know what I mean? You know, we hear so many rumours, but I know. I mean, I did a video. I was trying to find it. It was with um, Gil, because it, it wasn't Gil Scott, Gil Horn. But, you know, he's a famous um, politician. And I did an interview with him about Robert Mugabe. And, you know, he was talking about, the you know, how much animosity and how Robert Mugabe was really... Um, ostracized and talked down about once he started trying to retrieve the land and he wasn't giving up because you know it's very it takes a very very strong person to say listen you know you need to get off of this land that you stole we're taking it back and he insisted and he actually got he actually reclaimed back that land and apparently there was nothing anyone could do about it. But you can imagine how angry those people were. 
who had set up farms there and goodness knows what. So, um, so what? So, so Robert Mugabe, technically speaking, was a knight of the British Empire. I wonder how many of you knew that. So what exactly is a knighthood? Since 1917, the British government has been awarding notable citizens with spots in the most excellent order of the British Empire. You see what I mean? That's how you have to be regarded to get a knighthood. A notable citizen with spots in the most excellent order of the British Empire. And that is where they placed Robert Mugabe. So you have to ask yourself, how much is all this that's coming out about him or was coming out about him before he died true? Um, although the order, which was established by King George V, was originally meant to honour top-notch civilian and military behaviour in wartime, it quickly expanded to include peacetime achievements as well. So I'm not quite sure, given the history of, um, you know, the, the, when they were saying he was killing so many people, um, that he would have got it because of the peacetime achievements, it would be more likely that he would have been honoured due to his civilian and military behaviour, I would have thought. That's what he would have been honoured for. Just in my opinion, I'm not quite sure. The order has five separate ranks, Knight and Dame and Grand Cross, GBE, Knight and Dame, Commander, KBE and DBE, respectively, Commander, CBE, Officer, OBE and Member, MBE. Now, I don't know which one he got. I know it's honorary, but I don't know which one of the honorary he got. And the funny thing is, is that everywhere I looked um, for uh, Mugabe and his knighthood, it was just saying stripped, M Mugabe stripped of his knighthood. There, there, there was an acknowledgement that he did receive a knighthood, but it was fastly um, preceded by lots of um, entries about being stripped of the knighthood. So there was nothing to say why he got it. And I couldn't find that. So if any of you can find out why he got the knighthood and put it in the comments, I would appreciate that. Um, some of you may know. Um, so achieving one of the first two ranks earns a personal slot in the knighthood, which means they can add sir or dame to their names. So that is the GBE, KBE, and probably DBE. Non-Brits are only eligible for honorary knighthood, which is the category that Robert Mugabe falls into, meaning they aren't allowed to add sir or dame to their names. They do, however, get to append the suffix KBE to their monikers if they so desire. KBE is quite a high rank. Um, if any of them later become citizens of the realm, the honour is usually made substantive and they are bumped up into a real knighthood. So from an honorary knighthood to a real knighthood. So who decides who gets to be a knight? Technically, the reigning monarch is the sovereign of the order and is in charge of making all appointments. On a more practical level, though, the monarch receives counsel and recommendations from the Secretary of State for Defence and the Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, who was Douglas Heard. So how can he not know that Robert Mugabe was knighted? Very, very strange. But I'm going to show you the video. What is interesting that you will see in the attached video that Douglas heard, who was foreign minister at the time, did not know that Robert Rowe could have said all that. What do you have to do to get a knighthood? While lots of notable figures are offered the honour of joining the order of the British Empire, only very few heavy hitters get to become knights and dames commander. That's the DBE. Simply put, these higher honours go to bigger names. Generally, it is a good idea to make a pretty substantive serp, pretty, pretty substantial service and cultural contribution to the British realm. I'd be so curious to know which one he got. 
because it makes a difference. It makes a difference in, you know, credibility and what people say about him, what is true from what isn't true. We know that he was a tyrant at some point in certain people's eyes. But, you know, we don't, you know, we don't always know what's behind the behaviour. So benefits of knighthood include getting a spot in the British order of precedence. The arcane system that develops the hierarchy of ceremonial importance for things like state dinners. So he would have been able to, he would have been invited to state dinners if he wanted to be. Wanted to be. That said, in 1994, Mugabe was not always the monster he portrayed as he did before he died. He, was, he really was seen as a role model for African leaders. Besides the knighthood, he was also awarded honorary degrees from a range of universities, including University of Edinburgh, University of Massachusetts and Michigan State University. On a side note, he was never Sir Mugabe because the knighthood was honorary. Also considered that as a head of state, a knight is lower rank than a king or duke, earl or viscount, and thus subservient to the queen. This would not be acceptable politically for Robert Mugabe governing an independent country. So that's all I put in there. So, you know, we only hear what the media tells us. We don't know what is true from what is not true. We know that there are many indigenous Zimbabwe's who saw him as a tyrant. I, did, I guess, you know, depending on whose side you're on, you know, it's going to, this, his behaviour is going to affect you differently. So I this, this video is just really to tell those of you who didn't know that he got a knighthood. And I was just wondering if anyone knew what level of knighthood did he get? Okay, and, and what he got it for. If anybody can tell me that, that would be great. Bye-bye for now.